Hello everyone, thank you for clicking. Welcome to a quick run through of the first race of the Super League 2021 Championship. For a full in-depth explanation of the series and the first race, please check out my previous video. The first race in London would be over the triple mix format, three super sprint triathlons in quick succession where the order of the disciplines is changed up each race. Total times for stage one and two are combined which then determine the start order and time for the final stage where the winner would take 15 points in the series and $20,000. I thought it was very strange that everyone except for Vasco Velasa here in the purple opted for a wetsuit. We had just seen the women's race where no one wore one and the swim was only 300 meters long. There was also a short shoot on offer for the first one through the swim in T1, which would give someone the opportunity to take a slight shortcut on the stage three final run, so the seconds really did count here. It was therefore going to be a case of Vasco Velasa versus everyone else, who would have to distance him a bit to avoid handing him the short shoot on a platter. We see three wetsuiters, Matt Hauser, Taylor Reed, and Jonas Schomburg take a bit of a lead from the hard start on the swim. This trio are taking a nice smooth line to the first buoy where everyone else is still in the big block, heading into a chaotic turning point just ahead. The field is stretched out coming towards the swim finish with Velasa getting caught in the washing machine around the boys and falling back slightly. Matt Hauser is the first out of the swim and to his bike. I was skeptical of the wetsuits at the start but these three get them off impressively quickly. Meanwhile we see Louis just passing them as the best of the rest into T1. A good swim for Louis but I think he would have been disappointed by this as he would have been targeting that first short shoot on offer. Hauser however has a strong T1 and takes a short shoot instead and a few seconds lead onto the bike. We see Reed, Schomburg and Louis chasing him down whilst Hayden Wilde asserts himself in the next pack back that contains Johnny Brownlee too. Onto this wide straight road towards the end of lap one, there are still clear gaps but everyone is working hard to chase down the athletes ahead of them. This is a crucial point in the race as you don't want to let any distinct packs form as on a technical short course like this any gap is very difficult to close. With everyone working hard though, everyone in this shot eventually comes back together on the bike. Wilde is bridging these gaps very effectively and is the first one to make contact from his group. In fact, Wilde is looking very strong indeed, 2.5 laps in and he's almost accidentally finding himself off the front from a big turn. He commits to it though and opens up what is a decent gap in the context of Super League racing. You can also see the way he's set up his shoes here to easily slip them on and off to give himself a slight edge through T2 where again another short shoot is on offer for the first one onto the stage one run. Unfortunately, after a great swim, Hauser suffers a flat and begins to lose a lot of time. Wilde maintains his gap and is first to make it through T2, taking that all important short shoot that should be worth in the region of five seconds in the final stage run. A few seconds back, the main group containing Louis, Brownlee, Velasa, Ryder and Nena is running down Wilde and managed to absorb him around 600 meters in. Meanwhile, you can see Alex Yi in the back here running through the field to make up time after losing out over the swim in the bike. This shot's not very important to the race, but I just wanted to include it to show Johnny Brownlee in all his leopard print glory. Stage one is all about time and gaps rather than positions, but we still see the pace pick up in the final 200 meters. With four able to stick with the pace, Louis and Brownie are content to let the young guns of Wilde and Velasa take the win. Yi loses 14 seconds, whilst Hauser loses 50 after his puncture. He also then has to arrange for his flat to be changed whilst he gets ready to start stage two. Stage two would be a run, bike, swim format. Yi set a very fast pace from the off, looking to string out the field and force a few gaps in order to make up some of his lost time in stage one. Disappointingly, we see Mola in the bottom half here. He's never quite been able to perform in Super League races in the past, and if he can't get to the front on a run start, then I fear he won't be able to get to the front at all today. Velasa sticks to Yi very closely, however, I think this is a bit of a mistake from him. We see Brownlee and Louis just a little back, using their experience to steadily get into the race. They won't mind if they lose a few seconds as they know they'll be able to make it up to Yi on the bike and the swim, so do not bother burning matches to stick right on Yi's shoulder like Velasa does. We also see Bert Whistle near the front who lost in the region of 30 seconds on stage one. As we come to the end of the first lap, Yi has forced a bit of a split, with a lot of the familiar faces from stage one being able to stick with him. However, when we get to a similar point 800 meters later, we can see that Wild, Yi and Bert Whistle and behind them, Louis and Brownlee, have opened up a further gap to Vasco Velasa, who is paying for initially trying to keep pace with Yi. This leading group of five consolidates that little gap through T2, whilst Nena, Velasa, Sagiv and Fabian are trying to bridge back up to them. A lap later and Velasa is still pulling to get back on, whilst we see Nena is another victim of a mechanical. The gap to the lead five is coming down as the run bike swim order of stage two is beginning to affect the race dynamic. Louis and Brownlee are confident in their swim on the final leg, so are happy to sit on and bide their time until then whilst Wild Yi and Bert Whistle don't want to give those two a free ride only to lose out in the swim. This allows Velasa, Sagiv and Fabian back into this group 
as well as Seth Ryder and Max Studer a moment later. Studer, however, after getting back on, is our third mechanical victim of the day. This large group comes into T2, Velasa tries to steal a few seconds by leaving it late to slip off his shoes, but it's Louis, Wilde and Brownlee that make it to the water first. Wilde actually wore his swim hat under his helmet and was able to get just a little jump on Louis. A good move by Wilde as a weaker swimmer to give himself a bit more of a chance to limit his time lost. 50 meters into the swim though and Louis is back out front. Brownlee muscles his way across Wilde onto Louis' feet into second, whilst Wilde does his best to hang on in third for as long as he can. The pace set by Louis is just a bit much for Wilde to handle though, who begins to lose a bit of time on the return straight. However, still a great swim by Wilde to limit his losses. Louis comes home in first, Brownlee second, and Wilde third. The first to cross the line in the bike swim run in stage three would be the victor of the first race in the Super League 21 series. It would be a pursuit style start, Louis would start first, with Brownlee a second behind him. Wilde would start 8 seconds down, but he would have a short shoot to use. Velasa would start 11 seconds in, Ryder 22, Yi 24, Sagiv 26, and Burt Whistle 34. The key factor in stage 3 would be whether or not Louis and Brownlee would work well enough together to keep their gap over Wilde and Velasa. If they could keep their lead over Wilde to the swim, they could then use their superior swimming ability to distance Wilde further and take his short shoot out of the equation. Wilde clearly knew this, and you saw him go completely mental from the start to chase down the front two. He didn't wait for Velasa to try and work together to bring them back, he was tunnel vision from the start, not even bothering to put his feet in his shoes. Before the end of lap one, Wilde had cut the gap whilst his feet were still on the top of his shoes and was steadily reeling in Louis and Brownlee. A full kilometre of all-out barefoot chasing, Wilde caught the two ahead, finally slowing to put his feet in almost halfway through the bike. By contrast, Velasa, who started very close to Wilde, hadn't managed to make any inroads. As we come into T2, Wilde makes a move around Brownlee in a bid to avoid being the last in the water. By being at the front or in the middle, Wilde would force the other two to spend the first 50 metres or so of the swim getting around him before they could put any time into him. Louis, also aware of the importance of getting into the swim first, had learned from his mistake in stage 2 and wore his swim hat beneath his helmet this time. He also took a slight little corner cut here to get down the swim ramp first. Usually we see athletes being fairly courteous around the swim entrances and exits, but not here. Wilde somehow managed to cut ahead of Brownlee to get into second from this position. Louis and Brownlee know that they need to put five seconds at least into Wilde, given his short shoot option, whilst Wilde knows he needs to stick with those two for as long as he can. Velasa has not gone away either. Here he is just off the back of the front three as the swim starts. Down the return swim straight and Louis and Brownlee have opened up a gap to Wilde, who's been caught by Velasa now. Yi and Ryder are also not completely out of it either by this point as you can just see them in the back here. Louis leads out of the water but has a bit of a hitch getting his shoe on in T2 and Brownlee takes the lead. They do have a gap to Wilde but it's going to come down to the wire. Wilde opts against the short shoot on lap 1 which is definitely the right decision provided he has the legs to reel in Louis and Brownlee again ready to use it on lap 2. Otherwise, if Wilde doesn't have the strength to catch Louis and Brownlee, then he'd be best to use the shoot on lap one to close that gap and try and hang on for a sprint finish at the end of lap two. Wilde, who up to this point hasn't put a foot wrong, is vindicated in his decision. He surges up to the two out front, leaving behind Velasa, and actually manages to overtake Brownlee, who loses a meter or so on the cobbled stretch. Wilde then uses the short shoot on lap two to perfection. He comes off of a bit of a straight and therefore doesn't have to make a complete 180 degree U-turn. He carries his speed through the chute and puts in another injection of pace to consolidate his lead and break Louis and Brownlee behind, who have had to run 10 metres further around a 180 degree turn point. Louis definitely makes a bit of ground up with a few surges of his own, but it's not enough to catch Wilde, who strings together a number of brilliant tactical decisions backed up by his strong bike and run legs to take the win. Louis is home in second and Brownlee in third. Thank you very much for watching to the end. Please hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed and want to see more of this sort of content. Also, let me know in the comments which you enjoyed more, the Collins Cup last weekend or the Super League this weekend.